How's it going YouTube? This is Strange AI, and today we have a PSA submission video. This should be number 30 on the list. It's been a little while since I did a submission video, probably over a month. I don't actually have anything at PSA right now. I know I had said at the beginning of the year that I was going to submit 800 cards during February for the special that was running. However, the market's changing, shifting, and I'm adapting, changing tactics to, I mean, better suit the business. So I did... Uh, I did go against that. I lied to you. I did not submit 800 cards in February. I submitted about 200, which both submissions are back. Uh, I had the submission next to me that was submitted last, and I'll be doing a video on that for this week. Um, the reason I basically changed tactic tactics, near mint raw is worth selling more than grading stuff right now if you think it's going to get a nine it just kind of is that way i mean maybe it gets a 10 and maybe that person makes out on it great that's good for them i mean i'm not gonna be upset um but i can still make money on it in near mint condition um you just say just for example let's just say i sell a card for 45 dollars in a psa 9 or 30 dollars in a near mint raw copy and let's just say both of the same card um hypothetically somehow in, in another universe the same card but the one is near mint and the other one is psa 9 and there's never a chance for either or to be in a different condition well uh 15 to grade so if i just sell it raw i mean wouldn't it make more sense because if i send it into grade it takes time it takes capital and um you're 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 taking up a slot that could be for a card that you feel like has more potential to grade so again shifting tactics selling a lot more raw and honestly it's working out i'd said at the beginning of the year i felt like this year was going to be the year of the raw card i'm not saying i'm right or i'm some profit that is definitely not the case here but my personal raw sales have been doing very well i know other friends that are selling a lot of raw cards as well um I just think people are getting sick of seeing stuff in plastic all the time. There are a lot of binder collectors, and I think people are going through a phase that I personally went through a while ago where at first I was all binder, no graded. Then I was like, dude, I'm no no more binders, all graded. And now I found a – I spent enough time in the hobby where I'm at a, a time where – yeah, I spent enough time in the hobby where I'm at a time, right? I spent enough time in the hobby where I have a healthy respect for both sides, and I also have an idea of what I want to collect and how I want to collect it. Um, a little better, at least, than what I did initially. Um, it's just time in the hobby, and you figure out your preferences. You get kind of interesting ideas of the way to do things as a collector, and yeah, I mean, I'm collecting a healthy balance of graded and ungraded. So I think a lot of people are maturing in the hobby and they're finding that they're feeling, you know, hey, I don't need to collect all graded and now I'm going to collect some raw and there's also people that are further ahead that are now collecting both and it's just kind of we're, we're going full circle here. Everybody's everybody's leveling up. Everybody's evolving. Um, pun completely intended there. Uh, everybody is moving in the right direction as a collector, which is good. It's good for the hobby. And there is a healthy balance right now, I feel like, of graded and ungraded being sold. So, yeah, again, tactic shifting there. Just feel like it's – I'm just optimizing. I'm, I'm sending in stuff that I really feel is like, like is worth it, something I was doing more before the COVID boom. And then during the COVID boom, you just kind of like submit everything. And then now we're back to optimization where – um, I'm going to make smarter decisions on what I submit and smarter decisions on what I sell raw. So a little rant rave there, a little bit of information might help some of you, might completely go over your head, and some of you might be saying shut up and go through the cards, which I also understand. Um, yeah, so let's jump into this. Um, I'm actually, hold on a sec, I'm going to take a sip of water because I'm my, my throat's already drying out. I've been addicted to this liquid death water uh, for the last week now. I bought a case of it and shouldn't because it's basically overpriced sparkling water. However, I like the feel of the can. I like the size of the can. I like the taste. Um, it just feels, I think it's more of a mental thing than anything. And um, it's keeping me from drinking soda. So I usually would drink like one, two, sometimes even three sodas a day. For the last five days, I've drank half a soda. So, I mean, you think about the calorie savings there. I do need to lose weight. So, um, if it's gimmicky, if it's overpriced, it is what it is. I'm just going to keep drinking it, keep buying it, and paying the price because it's keeping me from drinking soda. So, let's crack this bad boy and take a sip because, again, I am parched. 
Ah, uh, all right. Let's jump into this. I know none of you care about the fact that I'm addicted to that. Maybe some of you actually drink it. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm the only idiot stupid enough to pay like a dollar fifty for uh, sparkling water in a can. But um, yeah, so be it. <laughs> all right, let's get into this. Oh, another thing quick. I, I, this has to do with submission. Don't leave, don't leave. Um, another thing I was doing for the longest time was submitting only by era. And I've decided to commingle again up until basically base set up until probably I won't go past probably sun and moon. And most times I don't want to go past X, Y, because I feel like that's a good, a good kind of base era. And then anything SM to like, maybe even include SM because SM literally is like almost, it's not vintage, but it's old at this point, but anything I would say bare minimum price, Scarlet and Violet, um, and above Scarlet and Violet. Is that what I'm looking at? I don't even know what era we're in anymore, guys. We're just out of control. But anyway, modern is getting its own thing, like super modern, and anything based to like XY, maybe black and white, is going to get submitted in its own thing. So it's going to be fun. You're going to see commingled stuff here. It's going to make the submission more fun for you and also more fun for me. So again, we're six and a half minutes in. If you're still here, you either fast forwarded or you're a legend. <laughs> So let's get into this. We got some fun stuff in this one. All right, first up, I mean, no need for introduction here. We have the wonderful, almost best card ever made, Venusaur from Base Set Hollow. Don't worry about the scratches you're seeing. That is on the case, or the yeah, the case saver, the card saver. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just nothing. This honestly might be the be the thumbnail because I have not submitted one of these in a while and as you know i'm a huge bulbasaur i've been serving a sore fan so <sighs> good start to the good start to this mission right just there all right next up we have alakazam looks like we got a nice swirl in this one from base i've actually graded a lot of 10 alakazams believe it or not uh, probably at least two to three maybe even four so i've been pretty fortunate with that that's all for old back that's all for uh base set uh, next we're going to jump into vs uh, we have Lieutenant Surge's Lantern. We have Jasmine's Raichu. Love this artwork by Baba. Jasmine's Jolteon. Again, uh, if you're not familiar with VS, basically each trainer got their own artist. So all of Jasmine's Pokemon were done by Baba. Um, next up, we have Chuck's Donphan. All of his stuff would have been done by Yamashita and so on and so forth so pretty cool like the idea that they did this and i mean if you guys watch the channel you know vs is one of my favorite sets of all time i uh, wish they would do something new like this uh, it would be absolutely awesome but i mean i don't really expect that to ever happen but absolutely love vs series but yeah chuck's don fan we got chuck's prime ape and then we have Bruno, and Bruno was done by Yukimori. We got Bruno's Hitmonchan. I actually just sold one of these today. Bruno's Hitmonlee. Are these guys in the same... Oh, uh, yeah, they are. They're, like, in the same area. Like, she must have set the figures down the same spot or, like, next to each other for the photos. But it looks really cool. Uh, we got Chuck's Polyrath. I always really like this one, too. I like when Polyrath's a fighting type. I don't know what exactly it is about it. I just... I don't know. I just kind of do. Uh, we have Price's Cloister. Arita did all of Price's Pokemon. Probably my favorite in the set next to Yukimori is Kasube. Uh, Kasube did all of Lance's Pokemon. And not only are all of Lance's Pokemon super cool, but Kasube is an, a fantastic artist. So we got Lance's Kingdra. Uh, Blaine's Typhlosion, if you've never seen this card before by Masago, he has a strong hand there. You're never going to unsee it. I don't know what was going on there. If he added an extra finger, if he didn't mean to add that, or if I'm just seeing it wrong, which I don't think so. But that's uh, it's a good-looking Typhlosion until you look at the hand for too long, and then you're just kind of like, man, like what happened here? We have Blaine's Ninetales. Uh... This one's kind of thrown off a little too. This is Kimura, but did I say Blaine's Nine Tails? Excuse me, uh, Morty's Nine Tails. I, I think you, when you think of trainer and you think of Nine Tails from early on, immediately usually you think of Blaine's. But we got Morty's Nine Tails. Excuse me, apologize for that one. Uh, we have Karen's Rapidash. 
Kusajima did all of Karen's Pokemon. And again, Karen has some really good ones too, especially with the Umbreon. I do have my VS series set completed, so I probably will do a video at some point on that and just kind of go through it to appreciate it. And honestly, it's going to be just as much for me too, because again, this is one of my favorite sets of all time. And this one being a very iconic card from the set, we got Morty's Gengar. I mean... Is there much else to say about this? Honestly, if it wasn't for the Venusaur, I'd probably do this as a thumbnail, but I'm sure I'll grade another one at some point, and we'll uh, we'll do that. But Venusaur needs some respect. We got Morty's Hypno. Sabrina's Espeon. This is by Asuka Iwashita. Yeah, and I did realize, too, the, the original, like, uh canto gym leaders that got artwork in these all had like interesting artists that don't typically um do art or that i don't personally remember seeing the name all that often so i thought that was weird maybe it was their chance to shine maybe it was like they're doing um they gave them two because all the gym leaders only got two pokemon each whereas the other ones usually got like five six ish or something along those lines so definitely an interesting interpretation of espion i don't think it's a bad card i think it looks decent but definitely interesting for sure um, also, I mean, it's like greenish gray. So maybe is this the shiny version? Like, I mean, maybe that's what we're looking at here. But uh, we have Rockets Wobbuffet. Fantastic hollow on this one. Definitely great artwork. And this one's by what, Hironobu Yoshida. I don't know if he did all of Rockets or not. I think so, though. I, the way they did this set, I would think. Uh, we have Bugsy's Ladyba. Umamoto did these fantastic art and kind of you can just kind of see the style i think that's what i like about it it's like a style palette like you literally just kind of go through and you 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 really see like how this person draws and how this person sees and interprets each pokemon we got bugsy's beedrill uh next up we have janine janine was done by komia it's pretty obvious right off the bat i love this arbok um yeah, I don't know. There's not much else to say about this. Like, just the way he did, like, the pattern on on the... What is this called? Like, the crest? I don't know what their... The hood. I think this is called their hood. But regardless, it looks great. Uh, we have Jasmine's Beedrill. Again, Komiya. Fantastic. <laughs> um, next up, we're moving into web series. Uh, we have web series Dark War Turtle. Web is kind of like underrated in my personal opinion, even though the majority of it is reprint artwork. Um, but I don't know. It's just, it's a really good set. I love the seeing these cards in the E-Series border. Otherwise, you wouldn't even see this card unless you saw the vending copy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just gives them a complete different perspective of the card. We got Volpix. Electrode. This, is this, this might even be exclusive. Nah, this isn't exclusive to the set. Is this a vending card? What is this? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I can't think of it offhand. Uh, we got Dark Dark Slowbro. Again, seeing these, some of these in non-hollow is pretty cool. Like, so we got Nido King here. Seeing Nido King non-hollow is kind of sweet from base set. <laughs> Ooh. What is this, like Pokedex or something like that? Or Handy 808, apparently. That's what we're going to call it. Handy 808. You might be thinking, why am I submitting trainers if I said I'm optimizing? I have to assume this stuff's super low pop. So in my opinion, if I can grade a 10 on this, um, definitely get more out of it than what I would uh, near mint. And honestly, if it even grades a 9, I think I'll get better better return than what I would near mint. So again, um, I'm always thinking. I'm always kind of interpreting things in my head when I see them. And I mean, it's quicker than you know sitting there all day dreaming and thinking about a trainer and what the most... Uh, the best way to handle it is, or the best way to, to take care of it is to submit it, sell it raw, but, um, and not to say I make all the right decisions, because I absolutely don't, but for me, like, these are, like, near mint mint, um, it, it just made more sense to submit them, so. This one, I don't remember either, I don't know what the name of it is, but this is a vending series card as well, but this is pretty sweet with the Prime Ape. Uh, we have Diglett, this is a, what? Aso, is it Aso Bicata or whatever they call it? Aso Bicata Diglett or something like that. I don't know. Some of you guys are going to yell at me and for, for butchering that. But um, 
yeah, it's Diglett, and it's typically a promo. We have Execute, Jungle Reprint. I mean, again, look at, does it not look sick with the, with the border like that? I don't know. I probably should do a, a binder, a binder, uh, page, excuse me, binder set of web series, just because it's a small set. It's pretty easy to put together. Um, yeah, there's some pricier cards. Like if you're, if I'm getting the Charizard, I mean, you're probably bare minimum looking at like 150 to $200 for a played copy, but I think it's, uh, I think it's a set worth putting together for sure. Maybe I'll do like a first edition and unlimited. That'd be kind of cool. Um, we got Venonat. This is the vending reprint. It's great artwork too. And that does it for web series. Next up, we got E series, and we're gonna move into Expedition first. We have the non hollow Mew. We have the Hollow Rare Weezing. Fantastic artwork by Kusajima. Kind of an underrated card, I think, from this set. Oh, we got the Rapidash. I mean, honestly, they're all good. E-Series is just fantastic. Expedition, all the way up to Mysterious Mountains. Um, everything is just fantastic, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Rapidash by Jimeno. We got Machamp by Shinichi. Looks like we might have a swirl on this one. Not as much hollow space there, but definitely a good-looking card. Uh, we got the Cheese and Electrode, but also by Shinichi Yoshida. Looks like this one has a super big swirl. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta like the background of this too. <laughs> he looks like a very yeah, he looks like a very devious electrode in this one. Alright, next up we have oh excuse me. That was uh Town on No Map too. My apologies. We moved into town. Um again, Town on No Map, we have Magneton. Magneton got all the cards back then. It was the most popular Pokemon. You can ask anybody. They absolutely loved it. <laughs> but this is a good card. I mean, it's a good artwork. Got Muck. I love this Muck. I have no idea why, but I absolutely just love this Muck. I mean, maybe because it's a Kusajima artwork. I'm not exactly sure, but it's just a really good card. We got Slowpoke. I mean, do you, is there much else to say? I mean, this is Kasube. I mean, look at it. Just look at it. Would you just look at it? Um, actually might have been a different set too. Yeah, that was Wind from the Sea. That was the only one from Wind from the Sea actually too. And I think this is the only one here. Yeah, this is the only one from Split Earth. We have the Starmie. Ooh, look at that swirl. It's a good looking Starmie. I love this Starmie too. I like when Starmie gets a Psychic type. And to be completely honest with you, this might be one of the only cards. No, I lie. Neo 3 Rev. Uh, Starmie also got Psychic type. And I like that card too, coincidentally. All right, now we're into Mysterious Mountains. We got Dugong. Man, I love E-Series. I, I don't know. I, I think it's because a lot of these Pokemon that wouldn't normally get a hollow got a hollow. And I think it's cool that Dugong got one. Magcargo got two in in uh, E-Series because it needed it. Uh, we have <laughs> Magcargo hollow. It's a good card. I mean, Mag Cargo is a cool Pokemon, but I, I don't like when... I don't like these eras that seem so short in my personal opinion, compared to today, the way they print things. And yet, in that short time frame, they did, like, a certain Pokemon so many times. I feel like, you know, give another Pokemon a chance. Like, imagine if this was, like, Quagsire. You know what I mean? Like, come on now, this Quagsire got a hollow in E-Series? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That would have been sick. But this is a good-looking card. Um, it's interesting that Mag Cargo got a fighting type. I mean, I think what Mag Cargo is ground and fire, but uh, definitely, it definitely gives it a different vibe for sure. Got a nice swirl in this one. We got Beedrill. Always really like this one too, just because I, I typically like cards where there's more than one of the same Pokemon in the uh, in the photo. But great artwork as well. Like the eyes are super sparkly. And then that's it for E-Series. Well, technically this is E-Series Border, but this is the Trainers Magazine promo Croconaw, or Croconaw, whatever you want to call him. He's cool, that's all I know. This is part of a bigger picture with Koalaba and Bayleaf in it by Arita. Like, it would all piece together if you had all three of them. All right, moving into EX era. We have uh, Ludicolo, Delta Species from Miracle Crystal. Uh, we're moving into Magmaverse Aqua. 
Blaziken EX. I think this one's a fantastic one. I feel like one of the very few EXs from this era that Rio Yu, yeah, speaking of that, Rio Yuita did not do. And then we have the Undone Seal. Nine Tails EX. I think this one's cool too, because like you can see the eye. Like they did like a zoom in on the face as the background. Looks like we got a nice swirl on this one. Golden Sky Silver Ocean, another one of my favorite sets from this era. Uh, we got Flareon. I love how dark and rich the colors on Flareon are in, in this one. Typhlosion. Another good Kusajima artwork. Uh, moving on to Dragon Frontiers. We have Nido Queen. It seems weird seeing Dragon Frontiers card centered because that's pretty much all I pick out to green. I mean, this one's a little bit off compared to the Ampharos, but these are usually so bad. We got the Nido Queen Delta Species. I'd like to see this one in metal type. I wish the Ampharos was in metal type as well, but it is not. We got the Snorlax Grass type. I kind of wish this would have been a different typing, but it is cool seeing Snorlax and Grass. I mean, I don't know. I maybe like fighting would have been cool even though i guess fighting's technically his weakness but psychic i don't know something something different than grass i don't know why i just don't like the idea of snorlax and grass type quite as much but it's still a cool card i love delta species stuff we got sharpedo ex we're into clash of the loose sky now got a nice swirl on this one i think this is kind of an underrated pokemon and underrated card i like the sharpedo got the the dark type um using crunch i'd assume in this one but yeah this is a really good card another fan favorite and also i mean i can't say that i don't like it either we got mirage forest gangar i mean it's kind of hard not to like gangar and it's kind of hard not to like this card to be completely honest if you don't like gangar if you honestly in in all honesty do not like gangar as a pokemon comment below and just give me your reasons i'm not gonna hate on it I might not agree with your opinion, but I'm not going to hate on it. But I'm just curious as to, you know, what would a Gengar hater, you know, be like? Like, what would they, what would their reasons be behind it? Just, just kind of like being a hipster, like, oh, everybody likes Gengar, so I don't. Or like, what, what are the reasons? Are you scared of ghosts? Like, you know, I'm just kind of curious, to be honest. Another good one here, and another Kusajima artwork. We have the Aerodactyl from Mirage Forest. Kusajima is a legend. Uh, we have Expansion Pack, Hitmonchan EX. This this thing is crazy. I think all the EXs from, from this set are just absolutely wild. This would have been Ruby and Sapphire in English. We got a swirl there. We just got... This thing's just peppered with foiling. Just insane. All right, we got Rocket Gang Strikes Back. We got Tyranitar. This is, in my opinion, whenever I look at this, I always think of, like, the Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla Tyranitar. That's how I look at this one. It, it honestly looks like it's like straight out of a comic book for, for Godzilla. Uh, we got Dark Weezing. Nice foiling on this one. Uh, next up, we have Holland Research Tower. We have the Gardevoir. See, I don't know why these are technically like Delta species, because they're not like different typing. I mean, maybe somebody can shed some light on that for me, because I didn't really... I only collected up until what would have been like EX Dragon... Uh, when I was younger, and then, I mean, it took me till what, 2014, 2015 to get back into the hobby, unfortunately, so, but, yeah, this is a good-looking card, I just, like, why is this Delta Species, if it's still Psychic-type, I know it has, like, this faded look to it, like, with the Psychic Emblem, but, again, I'm not exactly sure what it means, there's other ones like that as well, uh, this is a really good one, too, uh, we got Venusaur EX, this is from the Venusaur Constructed deck in English. It would have been Flight of Legends. I mean, I like this card in, in either, but I obviously prefer this one. And this is definitely one. I've had this probably multiple times in PSA 10. And uh, I've kept it for a little while, sold it, kept it for a little while, sold it. But I think what I actually want to do with this, I want to get... There's the Venusaur, the Blastoise, and the Charizard. I'd kind of like to get all three of the Constructed decks to collect these and just save them sealed. And because these are the face cards with the coin and stuff on the front. So maybe we'll do that in the future. We got Flareon EX. This is from the Howlin' Research Tower Fire. Beautiful card. 
And then this is the same thing, except from the Lightning deck with the Jolteon. Uh, this is a movie commemoration VS pack. I, I would assume this is Aura's Lucario movie because this is Aura's Lucario. Uh, this is a good looking card as well. I like also when Lucario gets the steel typing instead of fighting. We got Rota's Mew. I don't think this is from the same movie, even though like it's probably like the same, yeah, same numbering. Out of zero two zero oh five. 05. Maybe it is the same movie. I don't know. I didn't watch that movie. I can't say that I kept up with the movies. I should go back and just watch them all at some point, but we'll see. Yeah, but we got Rhoda's Mew. Beautiful foiling on that one. Uh, we got the play promo here. We have the Registeel EX. Man, that thing's popping. Man, this thing's got foil all over it. Swirl, swirl. Looks like there's another one here. Swirl. The thing is just going crazy. I like the Reggies. I'm a big fan, actually. It's one of those that I almost feel like maybe I should, uh, maybe I should do like a binder or like a species binder. But I mean, how many ideas have I told you that I think I should do in here? And how many do you think gonna happen? Probably none of them, or at least anytime soon. Just because personally, I just don't. I, I have all these great ideas. Well, in my personal opinion, for myself, great ideas. And, uh, it's kind of hard to follow through with all of them, especially when life is, you know, busy as hell. So. We have Salamence from the Constructed deck. I love this card too. I guess probably factors into why I buy a lot of this stuff because I actually like the cards. Uh, we have Torchic, 7-Eleven ADVP promo. This is another one where the foiling just pops. Great artwork by Jimeno. It'd be cool to see one of these signed. We have another 7-Eleven promo. We got the Meowth just kicking back and batting a ball around. Another great artwork. We have the Pikachu and Whalmer PCGP promo. I th I want to say this was ANA Airlines. I know that sounds weird because it's Pikachu on a whale surfing or doing whatever he's doing, but I feel like this is an ANA promo, but I could com be completely wrong. I know what it comes in. It comes in a little pamphlet, but um, and that's why maybe I think it's an ANA promo because that's how you, uh, the older ones came, but I, I could be completely wrong again. I can't remember what the release was on this. It's a good card. All right, now we're moving into Diamond and Pearl era. We have Stormfront. We have Duskull, Shiny. I know it's kind of hard to see. All you're seeing is scratches from the card saver, but, I mean, trust me when I say this is a beautiful sparkle foil card. We have Charmander. Again, same foiling, and you're going to see little nicks of whitening. I, in my personal opinion, I think they're a little bit more lenient on these just because they know that these are, well, I would assume they have notes on these that say that, hey, like these are more prevalent to having that kind of chipping, whitening. Uh, it's another one of those topics I've beaten with a dead horse on here where I've talked about it a thousand times, but anything from this era that has this type of foiling has this type of edge wear most, most times. It's not because somebody damaged the card it's simply like they're just more prone to it um the the foiling just doesn't adhere well and it chips and fractures and peels really easily we got heat ran level x again we're still in Stormfront. regigigas level x um we have the tyranitar regular rare I talked about this a while ago about how I feel like there's a lot of artwork from this era with Jimeno, um, having them tilted sideways as if almost like they didn't fit in the frame or something and had to be adjusted. Somebody brought it to my attention uh, in the comments that Jimeno often uses angles and kind of like, I guess, I mean, I, I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about, but angles to adjust your perspective to what the, what the card looks like. Um... And I never really noticed that before in all of her artwork, but she does actually use that quite often. However, I will say that from this era, I mean, dude, he's he's literally horizontal almost. Like he's, you know what I mean? Like, like I mean, I get it. Like you're trying to shift perspective, but um, I mean, this dude's literally. I mean, he's 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 like downhill, and he's looking on. You know what I mean? He's standing with his feet on. I don't know. It's a good card. I, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love this card, but it definitely is very strange um, the way Jimeno did a lot of the stuff in Diamond and Pearl era. Uh, we have Gyarados, regular rare. 
Also a really good looking card by Harada. And then we're moving into Shining Darkness. We have Lugia. Always a fan favorite. Uh, favorite. I will say it looks like Lugia's got a real skinny looking neck going on here. Kazuyuki Kona. Yeah, don't know how many cards they did, but I mean, he's got a fat tail. He's got a little fat slug tail. And then he's got like these little mini feet and then this little neck. And he's got these big old flipper, flipper wings. Um, I still like it. I just, uh, it's when you see Lugia a lot, you, you just kind of notice that. So maybe you can't unsee that. Maybe you hate this card now and I apologize. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I, that's the first thing I, I notice when I see that. Definitely out of the ordinary. We got Dialga Level X. Again, Shining Darkness. The foiling on this one goes absolutely crazy. Rio Yuida made a comeback from the X era to do this. Uh, we have Gardevoir from Dawn Dash by Nishida. Sort of on this one. Just a beautiful, beautiful card. Uh, Leafeon from Dawn Dash by Saito. We got Leafeon Level X. I don't know what it is about the Level X, uh, the Leafeon and Glaceon Level X. I I just absolutely love them. Um, I wish uh, wish Espeon and, and Jolteon and, and all the other gang would have got a Level X, but I get it. Like these are from Diamond and Pearl era. So nice swirl on this one at the bottom. So we got another swirl over here. And again, foiling going crazy on this one. <clears throat> All right, we have, I believe this is Cry, yeah. Cry from the Mysterious, uh, Rayquaza. Looks like he's got a foil, he's got a, he looks like he's got a swirl in the back of his head there. It's pretty sweet. I literally like this one too. I don't know what it is about this one, but um, there's just certain cards you just, I don't know, you gravitate towards, I guess. We have Dragonite, Temple of Anger. Again, man, dude, what, they, maybe it's just because I'm, like, zoomed in, and I haven't been really zoomed in on a lot of stuff lately, but, man, the foiling on these are just going crazy. I mean, look at all the orbs on this thing. It's just peppered, man. We got Porygon Z Level X. I mean, this thing's peppered, too. I don't know. Maybe they're all just like that, and I'm just... Uh, I'm over, maybe I'm over exaggerating. Maybe I'm getting like the open mouth thumbnail or uh, YouTubers or something, but just, I don't know. Uh, this one's not, so maybe I'm not. <laughs> we have Mess Spirit Level X. What is this? This is Temple of Anger still. Is this Temple of Anger or is this Cry from the Mysterious? I can't remember. It's one or the other, basically. So flip a coin. And then we got the Uxie Level X. Again, same deal with set on this one. Beautiful orb on this. And it'd be sick to see an orb right in the middle of his head there. All right, we got some promos here. This is from, what? I think this is the Shining Darkness special pack release promo. Got the Empoleon level X. And dude, just a great card. She's a row. Manaphy play promo. And dude. We are just getting these peppered hollows, and they look absolutely great. All right, moving into Platinum Era, and this is going to finish this out here. Yep, I don't think I was anything from an Earth. Yeah, this is all Platinum Era, and that's where we're ending off here. We have Palkia G Level X from Galactic's Conquest. Just listed some of these raw today, so this is, like, fresh on my mind. Uh, Drapion Level X, also Galactic's Conquest. Drapion, underrated. Shout out to the arm, head, scorpion guy, Pokemon thing, whatever he is, but he's cool. Beautiful, beautiful Jimeno artwork with the Blastoise. I like how, like, the the cannon's, like, spouting the water out, and it's just kind of, like, glistening and glittering. I don't know. Just I mean, it's it's a Jimeno. It's a great artwork. But And again, hey, look, see? Sideways, super exaggerated sideways. Yeah, 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 yeah. See? Then you tilt it, and you're like, oh, man, completely different perspective. Probably just go all the way around this thing and look at it differently. But I, I think I actually like it better looking at it like that. I don't know. I know what you're doing, Jimeno, but it's a good-looking card. We have Gardevoir, still in Galactic's Conquest. It's by Saito. I definitely like this one less than a Dawn Dash one that we saw earlier, but it's definitely still a good card. I've talked about this one a couple times. I have a bunch of these to grade, and I'm really hoping for a 10 to throw into the collection. But we got the Vulpix, Shiny, 
with the crazy sparkle foiling. I love this deep red on this one, the background, the shiny bull picks, just everything about this card is just fantastic. I also just realized it's got three attacks with a no cost one. Do they all have that? No, that's interesting. Uh, we have PT3 now moving on. PT3 is what? Two is Secret of the Lakes, four is Advent. What is three? Three, what are you? Bonds? Bonds the end of time? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yep, most likely. Probably not, but I think Bonds the end of time. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I'm like picturing the graded copy I have in my head. Right, we got the Anma. This is one I have a 10 of already. If I really get real deep into this and start uh start feeling like I'm gonna be able to complete the 10 set of these, I think I'm gonna Oh sick. What we got going on down this corner? Ah, uh, it's a scratch. It's a scratch on the... It's basically like the, the fracture of that foiling. It's actually not a dent or anything. It's just a line. Um, we'll see what that ends up grading. It'll be interesting. It's a little off-center, too. But it's going in now. It's already here. Um, but we got the Anma, as I said earlier about optimizing. And here I am being lazy. Remember that. Remember that. But, uh, yeah, if I, if I grade... Some of these other ones in 10, I've graded some of the more difficult ones. If I grade some of the other ones in 10, I think I'm probably going to try to complete the set um, in 10 for these just because, I mean, if I made it this far, I might as well complete it. Uh, but we have the Moltres, again, Beat of the Frontier, or uh, Bonds the End of Time. Or was two Bonds the End of Time? And three's Beat of the Frontier. I don't know anymore. I don't know. I'll find out when I submit them, and you guys already know, and you're probably saying, man, you're an idiot. And that's fine, because it probably am. But we got the Moltres. This is a reprint of the a, a Airlines promos from, uh, what, probably like 2000-ish, 99, somewhere around there. Uh, we have the Tangrowth of Alex from the Advent of Arceus. This is the only one I have, I think, from Advent. Foiling on this goes crazy. Tangrowth is saluting, saying, hey, respect me. I am actually a cool Pokemon. We have Mewtwo Level X from the Mewtwo Level X Constructed deck. Great looking card. Ooh, Swirl's popping. And with the Orb, man. Maybe I should have sold this one near mint. This will get the Swirl Orb Premium or whatever. Which I have been noticing seems like an actual thing. Like, people literally pay, like, double a near mint cost for something that has a good enough foiling. Which I get, in a way, because, I mean, it makes it unique. Like, each card in, in its own way is, is somewhat unique with its foiling pattern, but... I don't know about double the price. I don't know if I'm trying to pay double the price for something like that. I mean, maybe if it's a card I wanted enough, like that I already wanted for the collection, and I'd be like, oh, like that's the perfect copy. But I, I still, eh, I don't know about that. Great card though. This is from the Shame Level X deck. And the last one to finish this off here, we have the Alakazam DPTP promo. This is like a gym prize ish or something promo. I absolutely love this card. I did a trade with somebody that is actually a viewer uh, for a PSA 10 copy of this. So I have one in my collection already. But um, this one's got a couple whitening nicks in the top, but it honestly was super clean. So I wanted to send it in. And I feel like a 9 in this one is worth it too. So that's why I'll probably get a PSA 8 on it. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's uh, in submission number 30. Um, we'll probably at the rate PSA has been going, see these back in about a month to a month and a half and the returns will be a little more consistent and my submissions will be a little more consistent. I may end up sending in less than last year to be completely honest. Um, again, this is the year of the raw cards for me and, uh, still going to send graded stuff in or send stuff into grade, excuse me, and sell graded stuff, but it may... It may be trickling in and trickling back a little bit slower than what I did last year. So um, another issue I'm having too, I'm trying to submit this right now. Um, I I want to do my submission and, and fill the form out and, and get it. <clears throat> I've managed to somehow lock my my wooden desk drawer, even though I don't have the key, and I never planned on locking it. It is now locked somehow, and uh, it has my ink cartridges in it. And I, you know, great for me. I need to replace my ink cartridges. Uh, the printer I have is throwing a fit and it is rebelling. It will not let me print anything until I replace them because I did the whole like bypass thing like too many times. So uh, yeah, I've been trying to pick the lock. I spent about an hour doing that. Made, they made it look like super easy on YouTube. 
uh, didn't work out for me. I mean, maybe I didn't quite have the right scissors and the right tool or the right paper clip to do it. But uh, uh, I'm, I've learned some things about lock picking the last week, trying to get that open to get my ink cartridges out of it. I, I could force it open, but I'd rather not break the drawer and, and break the lock if if possible. But it's looking uh, it's looking like that might be the option here. So we'll see. Because um, I really want to get these in, especially with now. Oh. Uh, if you're not aware, PSA for April is doing a special again for $13.99 uh, card for bulk. Um, I, if you're going to submit, I mean, why not save a dollar per card? It seems to make sense. So, um, yeah, I'd like to get these in and I'd like to get a bunch of other stuff in over the next couple weeks if, if it's available, if I end up conditioning scanning enough, because, again, why not take advantage of a dollar off? So that about does it, guys. Um yeah, again, we'll see this back in about a month and a half, and hopefully I uh, made the right decisions, and hopefully things are going well, and yeah, it'll be another month and a half gone out of the year. <laughs> As always, like, subscribe, comment down below, or don't, but either way, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you.